Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, this is Selguru, and today we are doing something very, very different on the show. Now, usually we always start with something flagship, then maybe we go to a mid price. But today it's all about value for money and serious bang for buck. We'll start off our bang for buck show with this the Motorola Fusion. Plus. Now, this is a phone that's taken a lot of people by surprise, and the sales have been astronomical for this phone. Quad camera, fantastic battery, very good processor, pop-up camera in the front, a gaming-focused one, therefore it has high performance, also very, very good screen, and about 16, 17,000 rupees. We'll tell you what we think about it. Then we move on to something even more startling. Techno comes up with the Spark Power 2. Now, this phone has certain things that almost no phone under 10,000 rupees has. First of all, a 7-inch screen. Well, forget 10,000, most phones don't have a 7-inch screen at any price point. So, 7-inch screen, 6,000 mAh battery and again a quad camera with AI. And it's priced at 9,999. Then we'll move on to this. Nokia's feature phone, it's old classic 5310 in a brand new avatar. It's got a lot of things happening out here. Music playback is its biggest feature. They've put in a lot of cool things into this phone. That and a whole lot more on Selguru. Let's get started. Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, the company announced upgrades for its entire ecosystem. We tell you all the additions you will get with the new iOS 14. That will come this fall. Motorola brings the One Fusion Plus to the mid-segment. With quad camera setup and clean UI, can it take on the competition? We find out. Techno delivers a large screen phone with big 6000 mAh of battery. Will it be a game changer for Techno and is it the best phone to buy under 10,000? We tell you. And Nokia brings back the classic 5310 with focus on music to lure the feature phone buyers. Is it good? Find out on the show. Let's get started with all the news coming in from the world of mobiles. And just like I had predicted, about a month back, finally, OnePlus enters the not-so-premium market. This will be a mid-priced phone. We don't know for sure. The rumor is it will be called the OnePlus Z. But we've actually got confirmation now that it's about to come out directly from OnePlus. So let's take a look at that and other news coming in. Xiaomi unveiled the Redmi 9 in China today. The company's affordable new phone has a bigger full HD screen and a fast MediaTek Helio G80 processor. Meanwhile, the large 5000 mAh battery with fast charging means the phone should be able to deliver excellent battery life. The phone has a total of 5 cameras including an 8 megapixel selfie camera, 13 megapixel main camera, as well as an ultra wide macro and depth sensors. The phone starts at 8500 rupees in China and like previous Redmi phones should hopefully make its way to India soon. Following the launch of the OnePlus 8 series, it looks like the company is getting back into the affordable premium segment as well. Today, the company started teasing its upcoming range believed to be called the OnePlus Z Lite or the OnePlus Nord. The product is expected to be revealed sometime in July and should compete in the sub 30,000 rupees market. And now we'll move on to our first story. This is WWDC, Apple's very big event that became one of the biggest ever in the whole world because they went online with it. Feels a little different to actually have Apple doing this online, but the announcements were amazing. We'll cover two things on the Cell Guru show. For the rest of it, watch the Gadget 360 show. We've got all the details of Mac OS, iPad OS, and all on that. Here, our emphasis is on iOS 14. Big, big changes and watch OS. Apple's Tim Cook took center stage in the company's Worldwide Developers Conference, an online-only event to bring all the latest updates across Apple's ecosystem and make important announcements. The biggest announcement was Apple's plan to start using its own processors, Apple Silicon over Intel's chips. Today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. These are similar to the processors that power the iPhone and the iPad. Apart from this key announcement, there were major software updates announced to the iPhones, iPads, Apple Watch and Mac. We will tell you all the new features you will get later this year on your iPhone with the iOS 14. Widgets iOS 14 brings a significant overhaul to the interface with customizable dynamic widgets. The new widgets will allow information at a glance and you will be able to pin them onto any home screen page in different sizes. 
Apple also introduced Smart Stack, whereby users can create a stack of widgets that use on device intelligence to give you the right widget based on time, location, and activity. App Library If you faced app clutter, iOS 14 will automatically sort those into folders like recently added or social apps. App Clips App Clips will allow you to use an app without downloading the entire thing. The user can sign in with Apple for apps download in iClip form and quickly use it when needed. Messages In iOS 14, messages become closer to WhatsApp as users will now be able to pin conversations to their top of their messages list. New Memojis have also been added with the update. Enhanced Siri The new redesign of Siri enables it to come out as a pop-up rather than a complete screen. Moreover, with iOS 14, Siri will also be able to record and send audio messages. Translation App iOS 14 brings a new translation app that uses your voice and text among 11 different languages. The app works completely offline. Digital Car Keys iOS 14 will also let you unlock compatible cars with your phone. Yes, you can use your iPhone as your car key. Picture in Picture The new iOS 14 software will bring picture in picture support to the iPhone. Users can multitask like watch a video or make a FaceTime call while using another app. Privacy Apple is big on privacy and with the recent update, it will add more features to keep your data secure. You will be able to see recent mic and camera use. Every app will also have to show what permissions it uses with easy to understand icons. Apple AirPods Apple AirPods will gain the ability to seamlessly switch between Apple devices with automatic device switching in iOS 14. Apart from the redesign of iOS 14, Apple also showcased the facelifts to iPad OS, Watch OS, TV OS, and Mac OS. Fan of dancing, Watch OS can now track that as a fitness activity, and it finally lets you track your sleep data as well. Compared to Android 11, iOS 14 is a big step forward for privacy and places a big emphasis on a bold new UI that should make the iPhone even more functional. All the updates will come later this year and the iOS 14 will come to iPhones as a free software update for iPhone 6s and later. And now let's move on to our top story. We've got lots of stuff, so we'll move very, very quickly through the show today. Motorola One Fusion Plus. Like I said, it's already a big hit, a big seller all over. And that's because of the value for money, the absolute bang for buck that it brings into the category. So 16, 17,000 rupees. Very, very nice looking phone. If you take a look at what the phone looks like, it's a great looking phone cover already being put by the Selguru team. Uh, very, very nice looking in every which way. Quad camera, pop-up selfie, great screen, gaming emphasized, very good processor, very good performance also. So if you put it all together and then you see what Motorola has been doing, have you noticed the last three or four launches by Motorola, each has turned out to be really fantastic. This one takes that even further. 2020 is full of surprises and Motorola's Moto One Fusion Plus is one such surprise. The Moto One Fusion Plus is a powerful new phone that gives you quad cameras, a pop-up selfie camera and a large 5000 mAh battery, all for just 16,999 rupees. But is that enough to compete against Xiaomi and Realme phones? We take a look at the Moto One Fusion Plus review. The Moto One Fusion has a clean design language with no extra elements that would make this phone stand out. That said, we like the phones that don't try too hard like this one. There is a quad camera setup at the back with three cameras in one module, while one additional sensor is independent with a flash next to it. Holding up the phone, we could definitely feel the weight of the hardware. The Fusion Plus is not thin either, yet it was easy enough to use. There's a fingerprint reader embedded in the Motorola logo on the back which works well. There's no face unlock on board. The front is dominated by a 6.5 Full HD Plus display. It looks really nice with bright vivid colors. Since there's no notch and no punch hole camera, we get more screen real estate, which makes watching multimedia content a fantastic experience. The Motorola One Fusion Plus is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G processor. There is 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. We played heavy games on it and it did not stutter. Even multitasking was a breeze. Moto has given a quad camera setup on the Fusion Plus. There's a 64 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, 5 megapixel macro lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. 
Motorola has done a rather good job with optics on this phone. The photo quality is great in daylight and night mode is a pleasant surprise as well. The macro shots impressed us. There's a 16 megapixel front camera with all AI beautification. The Fusion Plus comes with a 5000 mAh battery and 18 watts fast charger in the box. The battery easily lasts up to a full day of use. Motorola stands a step above the competition by using an almost stock Android-like UI. The phone is free from bloatware which we really like. The phone ships with a few additions like Moto Actions gestures that adds features like double chop to turn on the flashlight and a double crank to launch the camera. The verdict. The Motorola One Fusion Plus makes all the right moves with its focus on performance backed with a clean build of Android. The phone is a pleasure to use and the large screen makes watching movies and gaming fun. The quad camera lives up to the promise and the large battery lets you use the phone all day long without any worry. Priced at 16,999 rupees, the Motorola One Fusion Plus is one of the best options in the under 20,000 rupees price range. So what do you get for 10,000 rupees in the mobile phone market? Well, the answer in India is a whole lot. But I think Techno finally thought, what can we do to actually push that boundary even further? For 9,999 rupees, they decided they'll give you a 7-inch screen, 7-inch screen, water drop notch, so it really doesn't show, quad camera at the back, fingerprint scanner, 6,000 mAh battery and a fast charger. And like I said, all of it for 9,999 rupees. Really pushed that boundary way forward. Between PUBG and social media, phones today barely last through a day. But what if you had a phone that promised four days of battery life along with a loaded spec sheet? The Techno Spark Power 2 does just that with its 6000 mAh battery. But is it the best option under Rs 10,000? Let's take a look. The Techno Spark Power 2 can definitely be considered a phablet thanks to the large 7 inch display. It isn't thin or light yet, we found it comfortable to hold. The phone looks good too. We got the misty grey colour for review and the gradient effect on the back looks very nice. There is a fingerprint scanner on the rear of the phone which is quick to unlock the device. The biggest draw here is the battery life. There is a 6000 mAh battery inside the Techno Spark 2 and the company gives an 18 watt fast charger in the box. The phone can last days if not used too heavily, but even with heavy usage, it will last two days comfortably. The Spark Power 2 comes with a 7 inch touchscreen display with a resolution of 720 into 1640 pixels at a pixel density of 480 pixels per inch. While the large display offers a great experience to watch videos, the competition in this segment offers better resolution and photos. Games end up looking a bit soft. This Techno phone is powered by an octa-core MediaTek Helio P22 processor. It comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. The good addition is the microSD slot with which the memory can be expanded up to 256GB. The Spark Power 2 works well without any lags and modern games run well enough. It runs on iOS 6.1 based on Android 10. We could see a lot of preloaded apps and bloatware, which we aren't a fan of. As for optics, the Techno Spark Power 2 sports a 16 megapixel quad camera setup on the rear, which is a combination of 16 megapixel plus 2 megapixel plus 5 megapixel plus an AI lens. The camera clicks good shots in daylight and there aren't a lot of modes to play with. Over at the front is a 16 megapixel camera for selfies and it manages to take decent shots too. Dual speakers mean that you can turn up the volume loud while listening to music. There is dual SIM support as well. Priced at 9,999 rupees, the Spark Power 2 takes on phones from brands like Xiaomi, Realme, Samsung, Oppo and Vivo and stands out with its large display and 6000 mAh battery. If you like living life large, the Techno Spark Power 2 will be right up your alley with a loaded spec sheet including a large 7-inch screen and massive 6000 mAh battery, the Techno Spark Power 2 seems to be making all the right moves. If your budget is 10,000 rupees, the Spark Power is a good option. Let's take a quick break right now on the Cell Guru Show. When we come back, a whole lot more.
Now let's move on to a classic, the Nokia 5310. I'm not talking about the original one. I'm talking about the rebirth of it now from the current Nokia. Now this is a feature phone, about three and a half thousand rupees. Very interesting to see a feature phone in my hand. I haven't done this for a very, very long time. Very interesting. It has an incredible battery life, very music focused. They've given you special buttons to control music right here at the top. So music focused in every which way. So what do you get in the feature phone market when you spend around three? thousand rupees well here's the answer nostalgia that's what hits you when you pick up the nokia 5310 the nokia 5310 is the finnish company's latest throwback to a classic design from 2007 the company says digital detox is the reason to bring the feature phone back I agree more and more consumers are moving to smartphones however in these times of digital overdose there are a lot of people who are looking for digital detox for many of those, having an additional device which plays wireless FM radio on which they can then carry thousands of songs, which has a long battery life and a device uh, which can make a quick call without them going into a screen is very valuable. The 5310 is redesigned and refreshed in many ways from the previous version. The phone has a beautiful rounded design and curved display glass with a key mat. The Nokia 5310 is light and comfortable to hold. The keypad has a 5-way navigation key and alphanumeric keypad which is easy to use. The Nokia 5310 is touted as a music player along with being a phone. It is capable of playing back MP3 files and has an FM radio as well. The 16 MB internal storage is however not enough to store songs so we definitely recommend to have a 32 GB card added to the memory slot. Additionally, there are dedicated music keys and big volume buttons on the sides that make it easy to adjust playback while on the go. Nokia has upped the music quotient with two speakers that go loud. The 2.4-inch QVGA display is as basic as it gets. The feature phone runs the Series 30 Plus operating system offering an easy-to-use interface. The modern classic has been refreshed with dual SIM support which is a good addition. There is a VGA camera on the rear but there is no camera in the front. The 1200 mAh battery on the 5310 can last up to 22 days on a single charge. Other features include an LED flash. The Selguru verdict. Priced at 3,399 rupees, the Nokia 5310 is an extremely durable phone with a focus on music playback with long standby for emergency purposes. But with a few hundred more, a potential buyer can get a smartphone. To buy the Nokia 5310, your reason either needs to be digital detox or a second phone for emergency. Since we need to be connected to the world more than ever before, any other reason would be ignorance. That then was the show for this week for Cell Guru. As always, I've got a great lineup of stuff next week. I'll see you then.